Hi everyone, my name's Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I'm here today to talk about forthcoming book to TV, film, movie adaptations. I have 40 books to talk to you about today. I did this a couple of years ago and you seem to enjoy it and it's always nice to have a heads up on books that you might want to read in advance. These are scheduled for release in 2024 or sooner, one of them has already come out as I'm filming this, just came out. But as is the case with announcements like these, sometimes things get pushed back, so we'll have to wait and see, but let's get excited about them anyway. Because we have so many to get through, I'm looking at the pile of books I have here, I may not be giving a huge amount of detail on every single book, but I will leave lists and links in the description box down below if you would like to go and find out more. I have my computer here where I have compiled the complete list, in fact lists, because I've split this into four categories. So my four categories are books I have read and I'm excited to see adaptations of, books I have not read but may read before the adaptations come out, books that I don't really want to read but would quite like to see adaptations of because sometimes that's the case, right? We like watching different things to the things that we enjoy reading on occasion. And then finally, I have a short list of books slash TV films that I am not interested in in particular, but I think maybe some of you will be, so I think it's worth mentioning them right at the end. So um, yeah, that's it. Let's dive in. The first book is actually an adaptation that just came out a couple of weeks ago and I watched it as soon as it landed. I was a bit apprehensive because the trailer made it seem as though lots of things about the book had been altered for the film. I don't mind that as much as I used to. Creative decisions have to be made, but I don't know, tonally it looked quite different, so I was unsure. However, I really enjoyed the adaptation and this was one of my favorite books of the year a couple of years ago and that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is about a rich white family who take a break from their life in New York City and they hire a holiday home just outside of the city for the weekend. While they're there, the electricity goes out, the internet goes down, they get a knock at the door and at the door there is a black couple who say, this is our home, you're letting it from us can we come in because there seems to be a problem going on in the city and maybe further afield, we're a bit scared, can we figure it out together? And then it goes from there. In the film, the white couple are played by Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, and we actually don't have a black couple knocking at the door, we have a father and a daughter instead, and the father is played by Mashallah Ali, who predictably does a wonderful job. The reason I was a bit apprehensive about the adaptation is that the trailer seemed to make the film look as though it was more on the nose, perhaps a little bit heavy handed because in this book we don't really find out much about what's going on in the outside world and that is why it is so creepy and makes you feel really quite ill. In the film, yes, there are more concrete things that the characters witness, but I think it did still uphold that unsettling feel. And my partner watched the film with me and had never read the book and he found the film really unsettling. So as long as you're okay with changes being made, if you're not too precious about that kind of thing, then I would really, really recommend both the book and the adaptation as well. Then we have The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. I think this is already out in many places, but in the UK it's not coming out until January. This is a book that I haven't read since I was 16, because it's been more than half of my lifetime since I've read it. This summary is gonna be quite short as I try and remember. It did have a lasting impact on me and I think that's because this book is really good but also because it was a book that I studied for A-level. This is about a young black girl called Celie who's living in the south of North America in the early 1900s. She is severely abused by her family or who she thinks is her family and it's an epistolary novel. She is either writing to God and I think at some point she's writing to her sister. She also receives letters from her sister and then we follow her over the course of her life and it becomes a queer love story too. I think that this new film adaptation is a musical version which is very intriguing so I look forward to seeing that at some point once it's out here. 
The next one I wanted to mention is a book and a film called The End We Start From. This is by Megan Hunter. It's a very sparse, fragmented novel about a woman with a young child who's trying to navigate a flooded world. So it is about climate crisis. It's very thin on the ground when it comes to detail, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I think that adds to the fear you have when you're reading it because it's quite difficult to picture everything that's going on because you're not privy to all of the information that the characters have. Have. This adaptation looks as though it has been filmed beautifully. It is starring Jodie Comer and I will leave a link in the description box down below so you can go and find out more. Probably my most anticipated film release out of all of the books we're going to talk about here is the adaptation of Poor Things by Alistair Gray. This is one of my favourite books of all time. It is a social satire, proto-feminist novel which is inspired both by Jane Eyre and Frankenstein about a man called called Godwin Baxter, who it's rumoured was created by his father, and he in turn teaches at a university. He has a student called Archie McCandless who comes to visit him at his home a lot because he invites him to come and see the results of experiments that he has been doing. But Archie is very suspicious as to whether these experiments are real or whether Godwin Baxter is winding him up. So for instance, Godwin will present Archie with two rabbits who are exactly half black and half white and say this was once one white rabbit and one black rabbit and then I spliced them together. I surgically cut them apart and reattach them, aren't I amazing? So he then calls Archie to his house one day and says, look at this woman that I have created. This woman he calls Bella and he claims that he found her in the river after she tried to die by suicide. She was pregnant and he removed her unborn child, took the brain of her unborn child and replaced her brain with that. So Bella is a grown up woman, but she has the brain of a baby and he is teaching her language and teaching her about the world. This is both the Frankenstein and Jane Eyre element and Archie is baffled, is horrified, also falls in love with Bella and doesn't particularly know what to do with that. This is a novel that's framed as fact. So Alistair Gray says, I have received this manuscript from a man called Archie McCandless, who tells me that this is a real life account of his wife, Bella Baxter, and how she came to be. And then we get conflicting accounts from characters throughout. It is just so brilliant. I love it with all of my heart. The adaptation is being done by Yorgos Lanthimos, who is the um, maker of The Favourite and The Lobster. His films are so ridiculous and absurd that I think if anybody could adapt this, it would be him, and I trust him with that. This is starring Willem Dafoe as Godwin Baxter, we've got Emma Stone as Bella Baxter, and we have Mark Ruffalo. This is coming out in the UK in January, and I am very excited. Next on my list we have Eileen by Atessa Moshveg. This is a horrible little book and seems to really divide people because it is gross. The main character Eileen is not really one for personal hygiene and will tell you in detail all about that. She is a woman who works at a prison and she becomes a little bit obsessed with another woman who works there. I don't think I want to say more than that. The woman that Eileen becomes obsessed with is called Rebecca and I seem to remember there being Rebecca the novel references in this and Rebecca in the film adaptation is being played by Anne Hathaway. Then, something I'm hoping that's coming out really early in 2024 because it was scheduled for 2023 is a series called Ripley based on the talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. This is about a con artist called Tom Ripley who is hired by the father of a very rich family in America who says, can you please go to Europe and find and bring home my son who's infuriating me because he's gallivanting around Italy and spending money in this really wasteful fashion and I just want him to come home and get a job and take over my business and grow up. So Tom says he will go and do this for this man for a fee, takes his money, travels to Italy, but really his plan is that he'd like to get involved in this debauchery himself and then possibly commit some crimes. The actor who is playing Ripley in this is Andrew Scott and like with a lot of Patricia Highsmith's books there are queer undertones to this novel and adaptations seem to play with that to various degrees so I look forward to seeing how this adaptation 
does that in which direction it goes in. Andrew Scott is actually in a couple of the adaptations that I'm going to mention, which is great because I adore him. There have been, as I said, many adaptations of this before, the most famous one being Matt Damon's Ripley that came out in the 90s, but I am very much looking forward to this. Next, we have two Max Porter books that are reportedly in development, though one of them has gone quite quiet, which may be a bad sign. The one that's gone quiet is the adaptation of Lanny, which I believe is being adapted by Rachel Weisz. She is directing it and also starring in it. This is about a young boy called Lanny who grows up in one of the commuter towns near London and he goes missing one day. And it's rumored that maybe this folklore type man called Papa Toothwort has stolen him away. But there's also horrible gossip within the local town that maybe an older man who he hangs out with, is friends with, has done something with Lanny instead. It's about people not trusting each other. It's about vicious gossip and community. And I I absolutely loved it. I really hope it does get adapted. And then the other one that got announced relatively recently, and there is very little information about it, is Grief is the Thing with Feathers. This was Max's first book. It's a book about a family where the mother slash wife dies, and then the father and his two sons are left coping with their grief, and grief comes into their lives in the form of Crow, which is a character in Ted Hughes's poetry and torments them. There was a stage adaptation starring Killian Murphy a few years ago, which was absolutely brilliant. And the film version of this is going to be called The Thing With Feathers, and it will be starring Benedict Cumberbatch, but that is all we know about it right now. The next one I wanted to mention is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This has been optioned and is in production with HBO as a TV series, and this is a novel that came out in 2020 and is a adaptation of loosely inspired by the novel Passing by Nella Larson. And this is about colorism in the States and it's about two lighter skinned black women, one of whom decides that she is going to try and pass as white and live far away from where she grew up. Whereas her sister marries a black man and is very openly black herself. And it's about how their lives separate and mirror or don't mirror each other. And it covers several generations as well. I really, really enjoyed this book and I'm looking forward to seeing how they do an adaptation of it. Next up, we have very, very little information about this one, and it may be that it's 2025 and not 2024, but I wanted to include it in this list. This is Penance by Eliza Clark, which only came out this year in 2023, but Juno Dawson, author Juno Dawson, is currently adapting this for screen. That's all the information that we have, but I thought it was worth mentioning because that sounds like a very powerful couple there, Eliza Clark and Juno Dawson. This is a novel about a true crime podcaster who's investigating the murder of a young girl in the northeast of England from a decade ago, I think. Yes, it says, it's been nearly a decade since the horrifying murder of 16 year old Joan Wilson. So he goes around interviewing her friends and the tone in this is so brilliant. Eliza can really articulate how horrible friendship groups can be to each other and the subtleties and the nuance within that. There isn't, as far as I could tell, maybe anyone can correct me if you've heard otherwise, an adaptation underway for her debut, which was Boy Parts. There was a stage production of it, a one woman show that just finished in London, but I would love to see an adaptation of boy parts as well. That's just me being greedy. Then we have two Bernadine Evaristo adaptations in the works, which is brilliant news. Like with Max Porter's books, one of these adaptations has gone a little bit quiet, which worries me slightly, but fingers crossed. The one that's gone a bit quiet is Girl, Woman, Other. And I think this is also being adapted into a theater production as well, which is very, very cool because this, when I read it, I, f I felt as though it read like a play because the characters feel as though they're monologuing quite a lot, plus it's split into five acts. This is about 12 characters, as the blurb says, mostly women, mostly black, and how they are navigating their lives both together and apart. Each of the first four acts covers three characters, one girl, so a younger girl, one woman, and then another person who is somehow involved in their lives. 
And what I loved about this was that, well, so many things, but one of the main things I loved is that when you were with a particular character, you were so firmly on their side, you could understand them inside out and you felt as though the world was against them. Then you would see another character who's maybe had a conflict with the character that you've just read and then you would start siding with that character and see why they perhaps weren't getting on with the character you just spent time with. And I thought that it was a brilliant, so believable, realistic way of looking at two sides of a story. Well, more than two sides, because there are so many stories in this book. I thought it was brilliant. And then the other adaptation and one that I am so thrilled about is Mr. Loverman. This is gonna be a BBC adaptation led by Lenny James, and I think he's also playing the main character, Barry. So this is about Barry, who has lived with his wife, Carmel, in London for, I can't remember how long it's been, but for the past 60 years, he's been in a secret relationship with his childhood friend and soulmate, Morris. And it's about him trying to work out whether or not he should leave his wife and openly be with the man he loves or whether he shouldn't do that. It is such a heartwarming, wonderful book and I think it will make a brilliant adaptation. This novel here is actually not the one that is being adapted. I just put this here as a placeholder to, a placeholder to remind myself. This one is The Curfew by T.M. Logan. It's my favourite of his books. But there are two others of his that are currently being adapted for the screen. We have got The Mother, which is about a woman who has been released from prison. She was convicted of killing her husband, but she doesn't think that she did it. She was drugged the night that it happened. She can't really remember anything and she's trying to clear her name and then there's another novel of his called 29 seconds which is also being adapted and this is about a woman who gets herself into a very tricky situation when she witnesses a potential kidnap one day and intervenes and then finds that she's in a criminal's debt for the way that she behaves and she really wishes that this wasn't the case. Out of those two, 29 seconds, I think, was my favourite. And I do think that both of these may be books I could potentially enjoy even more in TV series form. So I'm looking forward to seeing those whenever they come out. Paul Mescal is an actor I'm going to mention a couple of times in this video. He seems to be in so many things at the moment, which is not a complaint. He is scheduled to play William Shakespeare and Jessie Buckley is scheduled to play Agnes Shakespeare in an adaptation of Maggie O'Farrell's novel, Hamlet. If you haven't read the novel yet, then I really recommend that you do. We are following two of Agnes and William's children, Hamlet and Judith, as they contract the plague and one of them dies. They were twins, and I think it's really interesting actually to read about their relationship and the way that Maggie O'Farrell explores that and then contrast that with how William Shakespeare included twins and mistaken identities when it comes to characters who look similar but are of different genders within the plays that he writes, for instance, in Twelfth Night. This is mainly following Agnes, who is a healer, and how she is desperately trying to save her children. As I said, it is quite devastating, and Shakespeare himself, William Shakespeare, is not really a huge presence in this book at all, and I'm gonna be interested to see if they change that for the film adaptation, because I just have a sneaking suspicion that they might, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. But anyway, then we have this, which I recommended, not recommended, I would recommend it, but mentioned in my last adaptation um, video. We don't have too much more information about this yet. This is The Secret Lives, Lives of Church Ladies, by Disha Filio, which is a wonderful short story collection, and it's currently being adapted into a TV series with Tessa Thompson. We don't have any more information though, so I'm really hoping that we get more information on that soon. If you haven't read the book, you should do so. Likewise, Mrs. March by Virginia Fito was one of my favorite books a couple of years ago. It is so brilliant. If you enjoyed Death in Her Hands by Tessa Moshbeck, I think that you will like this. It's about a woman whose husband is an author and she thinks that he's written about her in a really horrible way in his latest book. And so she starts to investigate him because she thinks that he must be hiding things and getting up to no good. And this novel goes to very dark places. I haven't heard more news on the adaptation of this, but I know that it is being directed by and starring Elizabeth Moss. So we'll see if anything more comes to light about that in the near future. 
And then we have A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. The first TV series of this came out this year in 2023. And there's a second series that is coming out, I think, in the spring. There is a sequel to this book, or it may be a prequel actually, but another book set within this universe that Elle is bringing out in the spring called Kiri. And I'm so looking forward to reading that book. I'm not sure if the new TV series is based on this new book or if it's just its own thing altogether. But either way, the adaptation has been getting such rave reviews and I'm just so happy that it exists. This is set in a town outside Edinburgh. It's about a young girl called Addie. She's autistic. She's campaigning for a plaque to be put up in her town. She has been extensively researching the history of the persecution of women in the name of witchcraft from centuries past. And she has realized, as have so many other people, that most of these women were put to death because they were ostracized by society for being seen as others. So potentially for being autistic, for being disabled, for being queer. Addie would like recognition of this. She feels so strongly about it. It is an extremely powerful novel. It is so good. This is Editing Jen just popping on here to say that there was one I forgot to mention, which is Animal Farm by George Orwell. There isn't a huge amount of information about this yet. It's been in the works for quite a while. It's gonna be an animated film created and directed by Andy Serkis and it's going to be starring him, Glenn Close, Nicholas Holt, Seth Rogen and I'm sure many other people who are yet to be announced. So watch this space. The last book I have on this particular list before we move on to the list of books I haven't read but may read is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. There is a TV series adaptation coming out with Channel 4 starring Dion Brown and they just released some first look images which I will link in the description box down below if you would like to go and find out more. Right, so now we have books I haven't read but may read. So there is a film coming out called All of Us Strangers which is based on the novel Strangers by Tachi Yamada and this I think is starring Paul Mescal and also Andrew Scott. This is a book that I may want to pick up and read. I just want to see what the writing style is like and if it is overly sentimental then I don't think that I do want to read it but the premise sounds really intriguing. Let me get the blurb up. On my computer. I think the film is going to be quite different from the book because the book is originally set in Japan and this film adaptation I think is set in England or an England that we kind of semi recognize. The blurb also seems quite different to the trailer that I've seen as well. So the blurb of the book says, the narrator, a 47-year-old TV scriptwriter, meets a couple who bear an eerie resemblance to his dead parents and forms a friendship with them, visiting them often. As his health declines, he comes to realize that they are ghosts who are sapping his life force. But from the trailer that I have seen, it seems to be a queer love story between Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal, and I don't know the names of their characters in this adaptation. So I'm not sure how necessary it is to read the book before seeing the film, but I think that actually both separately sound really interesting and it may be interesting to compare and contrast them too. Then we've got Luster by Raven Alani, which came out a few years ago and had a lot of hype. This is being adapted by Tessa Thompson. Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan is also currently being adapted. That's a book I haven't read but heard really good things about. The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. This is really interesting because this is a non-fiction book and it's being adapted into a film, I think, starring Saoirse Ronan. It says, after living life on the edge in London, Rona attempts to come to terms with her troubled past. She returns to the wild beauty of Scotland's Orkney Islands where she grew up hoping to heal. The Summer Book by Toby Janssen is currently being adapted into, I think it's a film, I haven't read this particular book by Janssen, but I have read other books by her, mainly her Moomin series. It says it's about an elderly artist and her six-year-old granddaughter who are whiling away a summer together on a tiny island in the Gulf of Finland. As the two learn to adjust to each other's fears, whims and yearnings, a fierce yet understated love emerges one that encompasses not only the summer inhabitants but the very island itself and I believe that Glenn Close is playing the grandmother in this adaptation. Then we have a book that I started reading but didn't finish. I really 
wanted to love it because so many people adored it and maybe it was the wrong time and place for me but that is Trust by Hernan Diaz. It was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2022 and lots of people were outraged when it did not make the shortlist. It is a very layered and meta book, stories within stories and I will leave a link in the description box down below if you want to find out more about the adaptation itself. And then we've got The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett, who is the author of The Appeal. The Twyford Code is currently being adapted into a, a TV series, I think. Let me just double check that. Yes, it is being turned into a TV series and the script is being written by the person who wrote Broadchurch, which is a big tick from me. Next I have a list of books that I don't particularly want to read but would quite like to watch. We have got Mickey Seven. So my understanding of reading the blurb of this is that people are sent on expeditions into space and if they die then a new version of them is created to start the mission again. We're following a character called Mickey Seven who is presumed dead when they don't come back to their spaceship and is regenerated. So there's a second version of them called Mickey 8, but they didn't actually die. And it's about how they can't let themselves be seen by the crew because I think if that happens, they'll get killed. It sounds like it would make quite a good TV show. Next on my list, we have Wool slash Silo by Hugh Howey. This is a second season that's scheduled for release in 2024. The first one came out in 2023. It is a dystopian. I tried to read the book several years ago. It's set in this weird underground tower. No one is allowed outside. Post-apocalyptic, but is it? That's the question. I really enjoyed the first series of it, which starred Rebecca Ferguson, and I look forward to watching more. There is apparently gonna be a second season of The Night Manager, which came out quite a long time ago, starring Tom Hiddleston. And this is an adaptation of a John le Carre novel. I don't know anything about the second series, but I enjoyed watching the first one, so I'll watch that. Then we have Three Body Problem by Lou Sishin. This is a science fiction book, which is being adapted by the creators of Game of Thrones. You can watch a trailer, which I'll link in the description box down below. It very much doesn't sound like the kind of book that I would choose to read probably, but again, would be interested in watching. A Gentleman in Moscow is a novel that is also being adapted. We have Geek Girl by Holly Schmale, which is also being adapted and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I am guessing is an adaptation that many, many people will be very, very excited about. There's one I'm potentially interested in called Fool Me Once by Harlan Cabin, and I really enjoyed a French adaptation of one of his books called Tell No One. I watched it maybe when I was 18 and just thought it was one of the most brilliant things ever, and maybe it wasn't, but at the time I loved it. This is being adapted, I think, with Richard Armitage, but it's a crime novel. It is also the people who adapted The Stranger, which is, I think, <laughs> in my opinion, one of the worst TV shows ever. And I think it was so frustrating because I kept on watching it because it would end on a cliffhanger, but the resolution was just so terrible that I really wanted that time back. So I'm gonna hold off and look at reviews for this one when it comes out. And then finally, I have a list of adaptations that I'm not particularly interested in, but you may be, and I just wanted to briefly mention them. The first one I think is gonna come as a shock to many of you because it was my favorite book last year, and that is Eleanor Knows by Claudia Pinheiro. This has been released on Netflix. I'm not sure if it's available in the UK yet, but I know that in general, in many different countries, it is available on Netflix. Eleanor Knows is an Argentinian novel, and it's about a woman called Eleanor whose daughter has recently died, and everyone is telling her that she died by suicide, but Eleanor is adamant that she didn't, and she's trying to figure out what went wrong that day. It's set over the course of one day, she travels across Buenos Aires to speak to someone who she thinks may have answers. The reason I'm not particularly interested in seeing an adaptation, even though I love the book so much, is because it is a very 
inner monologue type of book. The beauty of it to me is being inside Eleanor's head and understanding her from the inside. It's also a novel about having Parkinson's and again you understand that from within Eleanor's body and how she feels about her own body and I am less interested in seeing an actress who doesn't have Parkinson's cripping up and playing a person with Parkinson's and seeing that from the outside. That's just how I feel about it. So I'm not interested in watching that adaptation personally, but maybe you would be. And if you watch it, let me know what you think. Then finally, on the rest of this list of ones that I'm not personally interested in, we've got an adaptation of Wicked by Gregory Maguire, of Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel, the third book in her Wolf Hall trilogy is currently being adapted. June part two by Frank Herbert is coming out. I watched the first one, didn't love it. I don't think I'll be watching the second one. I realize I'm in the minority there. Um, there's also going to be an adaptation of The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan, which won the Booker a few years ago. One Day by David Nichols is being adapted. And then also The Uglies by Scott Westerfield, which is um, a throwback to my teenage years, a dystopian series that didn't quite have the popularity of The Hunger Games, but was around that time, set in a world where at the age of, I wanna say 16, but maybe it's younger, people become pretties, they get all of this plastic surgery to make them look a certain way and then it's a rebellion against that. But yeah, I'm not particularly interested in seeing the adaptation myself, but maybe you are, so I thought I would put it on your radar if it wasn't already there. So those are, I think about 40 book to film slash TV adaptations that are coming out in the not too distant future. I would love to know if you are excited about any of these, whether you have seen any of the ones that I mentioned near the beginning, if they're out in your country already, let me know, or if you're watching this in the future and you have since seen them. Let me know if I have missed any releases that you are particularly excited about leave a comment, let's have a chat. Thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video and you're new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that'd be lovely. And if you enjoy my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that'd be very kind. Patreon is a place where you can tip creators and the support that I receive over there allows me to keep creating free content for you all on here and also funds my time making these videos accessible by creating captions and all of that good stuff. I'm sending lots of love and I will see you for another video next Sunday. As always, bye.